so I got this big piece of carton white carton left over in my house and I was thinking like I'm gonna paint something there and taking my time I didn't know uh, what ideas I wanted and then one day I just purged and this is what I got this is a drawing of female pelvic anatomy bam, bam, bam. I love it so it's so big and it just stands there and I'm looking at this amazing architecture every day so I want to take you through this and explain what is here so we will start from the base so this is transverse lateral view which means is the side view of the pelvis so right here we start with labia major which are the female lips so this puffy squishy uh, flesh that is protecting and closing the vaginal canal and then we have labia minor and actually i just realized but that my labia minor is a little bit too big <laughs> it's almost size of the bladder which is actually also okay because all women they have different sizes of their labia so can you see this little tiny baby here this is the side view of the head of the clitoris how amazing it looks like a cashew nut right <laughs> and it just pops up a little bit here and of course there is a hood that is closing and protecting the clitoris let me get you a bit closer <sighs> this is the pubic bone that is just below and in front of the bladder and then we have two orifices or two opening one is leading to the bladder which now looks um, kind of we can say empty there is not much liquid but when it fills up it starts stretching out so it's like this sack of really soft tissues that is stretching out and you can see if it will be really full it will uh, move the uterus so this is the body of the uterus that's why it actually very recommended for women when they want to pee do not hold for long because this is not really healthy for kidneys and also it creates pressure or dislocation of the uterus so whenever your bladder gets full just go to the toilet now the second one is the vaginal canal vaginal canal is uh, mainly we think that if this is the woman it's all up but actually vagina is going a little bit backwards and climbing up in like a diagonal way and then she bends forward so i like to think of it as if she steps back and then she bows it's like she is bowing forward i really love that so in a way these two paths they are more parallel to the ground than vertical so this is the female plane when we are thinking of horizontal plane is a female or feminine plane where in terms of um, males their genitals are vertical whether it's looking down or whether it's looking up right so that's why males plane is vertical and women's is horizontal so from the vaginal canal we enter to the opening of cervix so this small part here is called cervix and most of the time the cervix is considered to be a whole part of the whole body of the uterus but in fact these two are completely different organs uh, maybe it's not so accepted or revealed in traditional medicine and science but in practice in Taoist practice all the practices that I'm doing cervix plays crucial role as independent organ that is responsible for few functions so one of them is protection so if you imagine there is a, a fetus inside so just before the labor when women is experiencing birth of her child the doctors are waiting when the cervix will open up and they speak of centimeters so they expect exactly the cervix 
because the uterus herself is ready to deliver any time, right? But she needs that cervix to slowly and gradually open. Now, cervix is the most amazing part. It's not the main or primary, but the health of the cervix will dictate the general health of the whole uterus. And another amazing thing is that your cervix is connected to your heart. So there are acupressure points that are connecting to your heart. And most of the time, this is where women store block or tension and also emotional uh, traumas and drama reactions. And did you know that this part of the body, due to the cervix, uterus inside is the most clean, the most pure organ in the body. Uterus never has a direct physical contact with the external. So the cervix is responsible for that. Basically, the only direction that is happening here is always out. Always, whether we are menstruating or we are delivering or there is discharge, it's always from inside to outside. And the only way that the penetration can happen is maximum touching the cervix and that's it so nothing ever actually goes inside that's why uterus is called the holy vessel or the most pure space in the world and this is basically where we all want to return back home and you heard of holy grail in the christian tradition right so actually the holy grail is the coded name of the uterus. This is the Holy Grail that um, in ancient times people were trying to find. This is exactly the place where the magic and the creation is happening. Now behind we have a sticking out fallopian tube with all the little fingers that are serving to catch, to catch the ovulated uh, follicle which leaves inside of the ovary right here so ovary is not part of the uterus they are completely separate for example labia vagina cervix uterus fallopian tubes are all one continuum right and this is just floating next to the uterus but it has a ligament that connects it to the uteral body so it doesn't float away. So in a way, ovaries are very special. They are not like anything in the body. Uh, like they are, for me, like they are like aliens, right? They are so different. Their anatomy is so different from anything in the body. So the follicles that we have there from the beginning of time, and beginning of time is when you were in your mother's womb, you had around six million of uh, unmatured follicles, which are called the primordial follicles. So if you are 30 or you are 40 or you are 20, this is the age plus six months. This is the age of your follicles. And every month only a small group of follicles will be chosen to start the maturation process. And then only one winner will come out and will be taken in through the fallopian tube where it can meet the potential sperm and then implantation can happen inside of the uterus body. Now we have a third orifice, which is the rectum or anus right here. And this is the path of the large intestine. So this is the part that we see and then it goes inside, in and out, like spiraling throughout the belly and pelvis. You can see that the body of the uterus is sitting between the large intestine and the bladder. And all of the space between is hollow, but they are called also like pockets. There are small pockets. They are, of course, more tissues that I didn't uh, draw here. But in general, there is some kind of emptiness. And this makes the uterus 
uh, a floating organ. So it's actually a moving organ. And throughout the month, the uterus changes her position. And she's also a smooth organ, so she can glide inside and really feel uh, comfortable in your pelvis. And this freedom has advantages and also it needs some extra support. So extra support comes through the muscles that are sitting in the pelvic floor. Right here they are not depicted and this was not the intention of this picture. It's more like a art, artistic version. But we can consider that right here we have extra layer of muscles that are parallel to the earth and they are called the pelvic floor. And this is also called the pelvic diaphragm. Can you imagine? So you have the diaphragm above and then you have one diaphragm here. And the miracle of it is that this diaphragm acts the same way as the upper. So when you are breathing in your upper diaphragm, when you inhale, it stretches down. When you exhale, it relaxes up. This is the same happens here. When you inhale, the pelvic diaphragm pushes slightly down. When you exhale, it relaxes. So you have this one of the biggest muscles in the body that work like a mirror. They are floating and dancing. And this creates internal subtle massage. So the diaphragm above presses gently on the digestive system, liver, bladder, spleen, kidneys, and then it, of course, uh, as a chain reaction pushes here. So this is how they both communicate through the uh, dance and this movement of the organs inside. And there is another way how they communicate uh, throughout the body. It's amazing. And I'm not going to tell you about this now. So the pelvic diaphragm, because of the muscular structure, it is though different from all other muscles in the body. So let's say it's not a muscle as in your arm or your legs that you could work out, right? Because this muscle, due to its location and position, is already constantly, all the time, is toned it's moving and it's being holding it's the floor so it's been stretched out to hold all of these organs and you have food and you have liquids so there is pressure there is a weight so every pelvic diaphragm is in tone so it means that we should not overuse or put extra pressure to this very fragile, like a membrane muscle. So what happens, for example, with the Kegel muscles, which is not actually uh, going to increase your sexuality and tone up your muscles. This is all um, a mistake. It's a wrong thinking. First of all, Kegel muscles were created for those women who had prolapse or incontinence and Kegel muscles was in a way helping it. So I'll have as an example the sleeve of my top. Okay, so let's imagine this is diaphragm and we're going to stretch it and relax, stretch it and relax as working out with the Kegel muscles or when you think of uh, Mula Bandha in uh, yogic practice. So you are constantly stretching. So look what's going to happen to my sleeve. So what if I do this for one hour throughout the days, maybe a few times, and then I'll do it for a month and then I'll do it. And sometimes, you know, the tension is so big. It's also related to emotional state somewhere. I will just stretch it out and then release. So what's going to happen with this tissue very soon, because being under so much pressure, it will just go down right it will hang and it will not have enough of support for whole this structure so this is how the uterus changes location and that we have a woman might experience incontinence 
or pressure in the bladder perhaps it's not the incontinence itself but because uterus now is relaxed and kind of laying on top of the bladder it gives you more sensitivity with the urination that also can create the issue of hemorrhoids when nothing is holding so one thing to understand that in a healthy pelvis there is a natural toning inside of the pelvis delivered to you by the pelvic floor but if you're constantly making this contraction and tension and creating pressure it will prolapse so most of the time women who are suffering with really weak pelvic floor it's not because it's weak it means that it was overused over tensed so Kegel muscles are working only as a one-time remedy. It will benefit as a little bit of awakening and bringing uh, blood circulation to the pelvic floor, but then you actually need, so if this is tired and tensed, and for that reason it's prolapsed, you actually need to relax it, to fully let it go so it can find its way back on its own yeah so it comes back to natural state and this also involves a lot of mental work like visualization and energy and information which is a big part of what i'm teaching so in fact the whole pelvis does not have much support the uterus does not have much support there is a lot of hollow empty spaces there is a, a thin membrane of pelvic floor muscles, but there is no support of skeleton because this is opened bowl cup. So we have one bone here and a bone here. And then there is a big hollow space right here. That's why the gravity beneath will always pull you down. That's why also contraction with the fact that there is a gravitational force influence does not make any sense so you need to relax but there is a small extra uh, ligament right here so it attaches to the body of the uterus and then it stretches out here to sacrum so this is called uterosacrum ligament and this is our sacrum and this is our coccyx so there is little tiny thread here and then the pelvic floor here and intestine and bladder are supporting this mother organ now all of this structure is interweaved with the web of nerves for example just clitoris itself has around eight thousand nerve endings can you imagine that the nerve web which is like a plexus here is called the sacral plexus it's a combination of pudendal nerve there is hypogastric nerve there is pelvic nerve and also vagus nerve they are all going down and through the connection they are supporting the sensitivity and the uh, communication inside of the pelvis now the funny thing is that once i went to a gynecologist it was in dubai uh, a few years ago and i could feel how there was some kind of tension and cramps around my right ovary so the gynecologist was a woman and i started describing her my sensations of what i feel and she interrupted me and she told me, you actually cannot feel what's happening around your ovaries because you don't have nerves there. So I paused and I was a little bit like, oh, really puzzled. I did not go into argument with her or trying to convince her that it's actually not like that. So the way scientific medicine is teaching us is a very separative attitude towards the body so for example if you have pain in your vagina the doctor will uh, most probably look at vagina 
if you have pain in your liver, the doctor will work with liver. So it's a very one target as if each part of the body is working separately, right? But Eastern medicine does not look at the body as a combination of separate parts. It's a one whole system. And because of the fascia, because of the tissue, which are full of fluids, there are so many fluids. So what is fluids? It's water. Water element is the best transmitter of energy, like electricity, for example, or information. So when there is something wrong around your, let's say, ovary, that information will be shared by the whole one system, okay? And due to the way we were designed, yes, we are able to sense what is happening maybe just here, maybe what is happening at the front, maybe you have some kind of damage of the tissue just in front of the bladder and you can sense that. So I felt more compassionate and more a little bit like sad for her because this is how she was convinced that you cannot sense your ovary and that you cannot sense hear anything because it's basically numb. Today, the way medicine is considering your body, most of the time it is not the way it actually works. This part of the body that I drew here is not even separate from your head. It's not separate from your shoulders. It's not separate from your breast. It's all one because in the beginning, when, this, when you were just an egg and you traveled all the way and you met the sperm, you became one cell. One cell of information and energy. And that cell started dividing to 4, 8, 16 and growing and growing. It means that all of this that looks as a combination of many objects came from one. That's why it's all one and it's all communicating all the time. And the sacral plexus is not separate. It is connected to the solar plexus. So all this web, like the branches of the nervous tree, is interweaved and you can sense whatever is happening in your body. And I love this idea that your mind travels everywhere where your nerves travel. Can you imagine that? So your mind, your brain travels everywhere where your nerves travel. It means that your thoughts can be anywhere. You can actually be present right now in your ovary. You can actually be present right now in the tip of your tailbone. You just need to open yourself to this kind of relationship with your body. Now I will add one more thing here. So your mind travels everywhere where your nerves travel. And then there is another one that your heart travels everywhere where your blood is. So the heart is pumping, right? What is heart doing? Receiving the impure blood and then purifying it and delivering it back to the body. So because of the fact that the blood was, was stored and housed inside of the heart, it has the part or the presence of the heart inside of the blood cells. So the blood cells of the blood are the continuation or extension of your heart. So if your blood is traveling everywhere here, it means that your heart is traveling everywhere in your body. Your feelings and your thoughts are present everywhere and you can sense your body and it means that you can heal your body. And the physical layer, everything that you can touch inside of the body is not the primary, okay? Because this is the map or the structure that was created on top of a certain blueprint.
So first, for example, before, let's imagine like angels or God or whoever you call, whichever word you prefer, they would think, okay, so we want to create Aliyah, right? First, before we actually make her as a physical body, let's make a structure, a blueprint, according to which she will develop. So she will have this karma and this relationship and this country and this family and this kind of heart and this kind of uterus and there will be this kind of relationship. And then according to this blueprint, I start developing, developing from that one cell. Now the blueprint is your energy or your spiritual body. So it means that your uterus was designed after the blueprint of your phantom or energy uterus. Now the energy uterus has a purpose. There is a whole list of purpose. So what is the purpose and function of the uterus? It is to contain, support and develop the fetus and shed menstrual blood in case there was no conception, right? So what else? Is that all? Is that all why women were developed in the way we are today? This is very limited, right? There should be something else because perhaps you have one child or two child or what if you decided never to have children? You will have dogs instead. It's your choice and you have rights for that. But does it mean that you are not fulfilling the purpose of your uterus? Of course you do. But you need to expand and broaden your view and understand that bearing children and giving birth is woman's secondary function. It's not why you are here as a a uh, woman being with all these amazing treasures that can sense, feel, and develop your consciousness. So this is where physical anatomy marries or returns, reunites with the spiritual anatomy. So would you like to learn more with me about this? Because there is no limit. No limit. There is such amazing, crazy, just mind-blowing information and then after on top of it we are doing the practice and guess what this is implemented in your yoga practice in your stretching in your breathing in your eating in your sleeping in everything you are doing so if you would like to study with me more i'm inviting you to join me in mexico this September 2020, where I will be leading internal feminine arts, 200 hour teacher training course for women yoginis who would like to take their practice outside of the traditional view of yoga. And to be honest, if you will research, you will discover that the traditional yoga of asana practice was designed for a masculine mind and masculine body. And it's not bad. It's perfect. It, it suits so many people, but it's not complete for women. Something very important is missing. I would say the foundation for women is missing. And that's why I'm so feeling blessed and happy that I can um share this knowledge and practice with you that you can implement in your everyday life you don't have to be super flexible for that you don't need to do any crazy asanas or think that you need a certain type of body like a yogic type of body you need to be strong and do handstands it's not the goal that you can do as your extra motivational work it's your choice and it's beautiful but this work is like returning home to the level of the seed where you understand what was uh, programmed into that seed and how it is supposed to grow. And this opens so many opportunities to self-love, self-respect and self-confidence because confidence is not a mental process. 
like you can read books about confidence uh, you can do public speaking or singing to in order to become more confident but it's not enough because you experience true confidence when you are having clear understanding of how you were designed and why so we meet in mexico from 1st to 20th september all the details are on my website reach out if you have any question and please please become curious about your own self on the cellular level this your body is the best book you can ever read it is the most honest book because also your body is unique your pelvis is not like my pelvis what i will be teaching you is to how to meet your own pelvis but not to compare or think if one woman is feeling this that you are supposed to feel that as well you will discover your own education inside of this body yes thank you